the broadcast. Welcome replay viewers. Welcome live viewers if you're watching on the web. Hi, my name is Janice. Hi, KD Leon. Welcome, welcome. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? Where are you joining from? Hi, Carol. How are you? How's everybody today? I'm good. From Birmingham. Awesome. I bet the weather is great in Birmingham today. Carol, very good in you. I'm doing well. So happy to have you ladies join. So please do share this out. Hi, Wusa Thoughts. It's a wonderful day today. Yes, it is. Happy Friday. Happy Black History Month. Thank you for sharing and inviting your followers. I do appreciate it. Hi, Rena. How are you? Hi, J.S. Is Nichols. Welcome. Welcome. So please do share this out. My name is Janice. If you're new to me, you're doing well, sis. Great, Rena. Hi, I.A. Lewis. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm doing well. How are you doing, Rena? Hi, I.A. Lewis. Happy Friday, yes, and happy Black History Month. We're coming to the end, but we still have a lot to share, lots of uh, great people to discover, lots of great information. Hi, Venus Mitchell. Welcome, welcome. So if you guys are new to me, uh, my name is Janice Temple, and I'm the founder of World Black History on Periscope. Hey, how are you doing? So where are you joining from, Venus Mitchell? We can do this all year. I so agree, I.A. Lewis. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. There's so much for us to learn. Pensacola. Oh, wow. That's got to be beautiful weather down there today. Nice. So please do click the little Perry dude down in the bottom and follow me. If uh, you're new to me, my name is Janice Temple. It is great weather. And I'm the founder of World Black History on Periscope. And today I want to share with you um, Janet Harmon Bragg. And she is an aviator. So not only is she an aviator, but she's a nurse and a businesswoman. Laughing out loud, it should be a lifestyle because we are all living history. That is so true. Hi, KLM999. That is true. We are living history. And we're making history on Periscope because, well, it's coming up on March. So we are. Hi, Periscope Summit. Oh, my God. It was a Sherry or Madison. Hi, Madam. Hi, Golden. Oh, Periscope Summit is in the house. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. This is awesome. Hi, Kaya Seaton. Welcome, welcome. So um, I just wanted to share with you about, yeah, I know Periscope Summit is in the house. I'm so happy. You know what? Let me just give a shout out. Oh, it's Sherry, Madison, and Ryan. All three of you. Oh, my God. We got Ryan Bell in the house and Sherry and Madison. So for those of you who don't know, Ryan Bell is the founder of, um, it was, well, it's now called Summit Live, but it was Periscope Summit. So, well, yeah, Periscope Summit. Oh, welcome around, Periscope. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing, you guys. Oh, my God. So, so excited to have you guys in the house. Oh, my goodness. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. So for those of you who are new to me, I'm Janice Temple, and I'm the founder of World Black History on Periscope, and we have been making history by celebrating Black History Month on Periscope. And we want to thank Ryan and Sherry and Madison for all their support. Okay, you'll be at work listening. Fantastic. Oh, you guys are doing amazing. Thank you so much, Periscope Summit. Thank you so much. We appreciate all your encouragement and hard work. We really do. And um, Ryan, just want to salute you for founding this awesome community of love. 
And uh, yeah, so we're sharing the love. We are, we are, we're, we're expanding it. We are absolutely expanding it. My co-host is a little sleepy right now. So you'll hear her in the background. <laughs> you will hear my co-host in the background. So I am going to get started and we're going to um, learn today about Janet Bragg. She was a nurse, an aviator, and a businesswoman. And so she was born in Georgia, the daughter of Cordelia Batts Harmon and Samuel Harmon, a brick contractor. Her maternal grandmother was a freed slave of Spanish descent. And her maternal grandmother was a Cherokee Indian. She was the youngest of seven children. And uh, so she went to Spelman College in Atlanta and majored in nursing. And then she took her training at McBriar Hospital, where she was one of two of an entering class of 12 who survived the probationary period. Oh, okay. Clarice is in the house. So Clarice is up next. Everybody make sure you follow Clarice. The hospital and nursing student, students assisted in operations and performed other procedures handled by interns. As a re result, they received first-rate training. So she uh, went on to become a registered nurse, and she got her degree in 1929. And then after graduating from, from, from Spelman, she moved to Rockford, Illinois, to live with her sister. While there, she passed her Illinois nurse license test. She was unable to find uh, employment in Rockford, so then she moved to Chicago, which is my hometown, why this is why this story speaks to me. She became a nurse at Wilson Hospital, and then in 1931, while working at Wilson, she met and uh, married Evans Waterford, and that only lasted a few years, and then she married again um, later on. In 1933, she enrolled in Aeronautical University Ground School. So the nurse decided to become a pilot. Her education was in meteorology, aeronautics, and aircraft mechanics. Because the school had no airplanes, now mind you, because the school had no airplanes, she decided that she was going to buy airplanes. The first airplane she bought cost $600, and she bought three of them, okay, three airplanes. Then she found an airfield where she could learn to fly. Um, so blacks were not allowed at that time to fly out of airports with whites. So um, the class at the ground school, with the aid of the instructors, they formed the Challenger Aero Club. The group purchased land and built an air airport at an all-black town of Robbins, Illinois. And if you guys know Robbins, I was really surprised. I mean, I had heard Robbins had an airport, but I didn't realize that it, it was the first black airport in Illinois. So in the spring of 1934, after 35 solo hours, she passed a test for the private um, pilot's license. And then during the 30s, she wrote a weekly column for the Chicago Defender called the Negro Aviation under the byline of Janet Waterford. And then in 1943, during World War II, Waterford and several other black women applied for appointments with the Women's Auxiliary Service Pilots, or WASP. The interviewer rejected her, and her appeal was unsuccessful. She then applied to military nurse corps, was uh, but was informed that the quota for black nurses was filled. That didn't stop her. She then um, went to the CPT school at Tuskegee in Alabama, where the Tuskegee Airmen come from, to obtain her commercial pilot's license. After successfully completing her work, she took and passed her flight test, but a bigoted instructor refused to issue her license. She returned to Chicago where she passed the test with ease as the first black woman to do so. So Waterford continued to work as a health inspector 
with an eye to start her own business. So now after she becomes a pilot, she decides she wants to start her own business. And along with her brother, she, they purchase property for a health care um, facility for patients on welfare. The venture grew into a nursing home business that housed 60 patients. And then she married Sumner Bragg in 1951. And he joined her in running the nursing business. They had no children. Bragg be befriended several Ethiopian students studying in the United States. She was invited to Ethiopia to meet the emperor, Halasi Selassie. Hey, Hela Selassie in 1955. They operated several um, nursing homes successfully until 1972. Later in the 70s, she traveled widely in Africa leading tour groups. In 1986, after her husband's death, she moved to Arizona and she was active in such organizations as the Tucson, Arizona Urban League, Habitat for Humanity, and the Adopter Scholar Program at Pima College in Tucson. So Bragg's achievements were eventually recognized to appear at aviation events around the country. Somebody let me know when Clarice is live. I appreciate it. Janet Bragg died in Blue Island, Illinois, a suburb in Chicago in 1993. So Chicago, for some reason, okay, Clarice, go set up. Follow Clarice, she's up next, you guys. So I thought that was um, really, really interesting. Um, she, she had a business mind. She was very, very determined. No did not stop her. So she was the first woman to have a commercial, first African-American woman to have a, a commercial li license, pilot license. I'm going to show you a photo of her again. And let me know when she is live. And I'll turn. And there you go. There she is. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So that's her. And there's a video on YouTube. I don't have time to play it now, but there is a video about her. And uh, so that is Janet Harmon Bragg, pioneering African-American aviator. So somebody let me know. Well, I'll play it um, and then oh, let me know. Yeah, so now the day arrived for when the man said, not oh, yet. Said the man is coming. You know, you know when we talk about then. He came down that afternoon. It was just after a rain, and the air was just kind of heavy, like just like so. It's beautiful. And they all said, "Janet, get in the plane and just be, just just relax and everything." Yeah, I just so found I her. Adorned our parachutes. It is on. I'm on. Okay, and we took off. I mean, she bought planes, <laughs> st uh, helped yeah, to, to found an airport. I mean, that is truly a pioneer. Okay, let's climb up, up, and doing different maneuvers as we got No up. meant nothing to this woman. So she, she's incredible. And that little plane, you know, everybody had their own plane. And, you know, just it seemed like you can talk to it or it would talk to you. You merge right into a plane. You know, just the feeling you get. And I knew that little old plane was doing everything for me. Coming down, we landed. So happy. There was Ray and, and the rest of the instructors was there, came out to see, and Chief came over and said, How did you tell Mr. Hudson? Well, Chief, I tell you, she did very well. I put up against any of your instructors. I've never given a color girl a commercial pilot license. I don't intend to. And we all stood there and looked at each other, you know. And Chief didn't know, well, I think he was so dumbfounded, he didn't know what to say. Chief will cry in a minute, you know. I think tears were coming out of his eyes. So finally I said, well, that's all right, we do. Now, if, if he had said she didn't, she need to work on her spins, or she need to do this maneuver, or something that was different. But he said, he didn't say anything was wrong with the fine, but he wasn't going to give me a commercial power license because I was a black woman. So it was pretty sad for all of us.
turn this back around. Isn't that something? So she is recounting the story of being denied uh, receiving her pi her commercial pilot's license um, by the instructor. And, uh, and he bluntly told her that she passed, but he wasn't going to give it to her because she was colored. So, but she went on anyway, despite that. And uh, she went elsewhere to get her pilot's license. And then she bought an airplane. She bought three airplanes. No, it didn't. No, it did not take her down. Not at all. She did not stop. So that is so, so wonderful. And, uh, and then she bought three airplanes. Okay, let's go see Clarice. Thanks, guys. See you.